Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Horizon, the video zin of JM Financial Services. In the last few issues, we've been talking about many areas concerning the Indian economy. Today, we'll continue in the same line by talking about how the Indian economy is getting formalized. How is it transitioning from the informal side to the formal side? What are the advantages, disadvantages, opportunities and how much distance we still have to cover? When we look at any economy per se, how much is the informal sector contributing and how much is the formal sector contributing is always a matter of debate. You know, over the years, when experts observed across the world, almost every single country has got some contribution coming through the informal sector. And that's why when we talk about formalization of the economy, it's important to understand the informal economy. What is the definition of that? What does it mean? And then we'll know what the formal economy means. However, between the developed countries and developing countries, one of the major differences was that in the case of developed countries, the informal economy is much smaller than the formal economy in comparison to the developing economy. So the entire story of informal economy is not unique to India. It's present across the globe. But then what is informal economy? Whether you look at a business, whether you look at a job, whether you look at a market, where the you know cash flow or the revenue could be reasonably sustainable, reasonably regular, but in spite of that, it may be difficult for the government to track, it will be difficult for the government to tax. The informal economy predominantly remains outside of the net of the tax system. And due to that, there are some issues. The outcome of those issues is that the global investors, which include the foreign portfolio investors as well as foreign direct investors, both, their level of confidence in the economy as far as the economy is concerned. Larger the informal economy, lower is the level of confidence. And this is just one of the reasons why formalizing the economy is required. The other advantage of shifting from informal to the formal economy is that it helps lift millions of citizens out of poverty. We did talk about some part of that in the earlier issues of Horizon when we were talking about financial inclusion. The formal sector also creates more long lasting jobs compared to the informal sector. The informal sector may have contractual labor and sometimes labor which is not even on contractual basis, the daily wages. The formal sector creates more jobs which are long lasting and with that the government benefits which accrue to a larger number of citizens and that's the these are the reason rather why formalization becomes necessary now let's look at some of the other characteristics and we'll first start with advantages and then look at the limitations of this entire process of formalization. We've already highlighted this, but even for the, uh, you know, at the risk of repetition, 
we would highlight that formal economy because the government can tax the revenues helps increase the government's tax revenues the tax collections go up number 2 majority of the businesses and uh, firms in the informal sector are small in size and because of that small size and absence of economies of scale they can't grow bigger and their productivity remains low the informal sector shifting to formal sector can see this advantage scale and productivity both can go up the ancillary to that is when the components of the economy are less productive the economy as a whole remains less productive as the government's tax revenues go up the social spending also goes up from the government but at the same time the infrastructure spending also can increase when the tax collections are on a higher side the black economy comes down drastically that's again a huge advantage most foreign investors businesses they are uncomfortable with the presence of large black economy because the companies are larger the labor laws would apply to them many of the labor laws do not apply to the informal sector take for example a firm with a certain number of employees is required to contribute towards the provident fund of the employees but smaller firms are exempt from that and as we just saw some time back the informal sector is full of such smaller enterprises and from that point of view a lot of protection lot of benefits that labor laws provide to these employees is absent in the informal sector and when the economy shifts from informal to formal sector as we saw tax collection goes up social spending goes up productivity goes up labor welfare goes up and all these things put together would see the engines of economic growth running faster and faster so the economy also can grow faster and bigger but well, that's the advantages side let's look at the limitations side while on the advantage side we mentioned that this formalization can create more jobs but at the same time what we saw in 2022 and 23 in the united states and some of the other countries in particular the larger companies were laying off employees so when the economy goes through a downturn the large employers are more likely to sack people so the loss of job could be one of the threats one of the risks the other reason why people may lose job has to do with the skill enhancement requirements the entire shift may see the requirement of manual labor to requirement of skilled labor a lot of the work that man does may be replaced by what the machine does and you will need somebody who understands the language of the machine and knows how to operate the machine so the requirement of skills could be completely different if a large labor force does not adjust to this reality more jobs can be lost the formalization means government tax formalization means government taxes and that means bureaucracy goes up and with bureaucracy red tapeism also goes up there is a possibility 
or a potential risk that this red tapeism can slow down the progress. At the same time, the cost of compliance also goes up. And sometimes in certain ways, the combination of red tapeism and the cost of compliance may hamper the ability to do business. And that's a fine balance that an economy has to strike when they shift from one place to the other. When the first issue of Horizon, we talked about India, a bright spot in a troubled world. Let's take a fresh look at how the economy has done in last few years as far as the formalization is concerned. And numbers support our argument that we are actually shifting more towards formalization. The journey has already started, the train has already left the station. It's only a matter of time till the train gathers speed, momentum and crosses many milestones. The tax collection, for example, in the last couple of decades, whether you talk about direct taxes or indirect taxes, we are seeing a steady uptrend. Now this is the collection in rupees, but even the tax net is getting wider and wider. If you look at the people who filed income tax returns, that number also has steadily moved up. In last less than 10 years, the number has more than doubled. And that's growth. Various other parameters, and you can see on the screen, be it the UPA transactions, be it the mutual fund penetration, people participating in the stock markets, even something as basic as the bank accounts, these things are on a rise. And as these things go, India would continue to march forward. Having said that, we've got miles to cover and just sharing one particular data point out here, we covered in the previous issue where we talked about insurance for all, even as we speak, only 2% of households have access to life insurance policies. We've got miles to go. But as we said earlier, the train has already left the station and it's slowly and steadily gathering speed. So let's wish best of luck to all of us and our country. Thank you so much. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.